Okay, so let's pick up with the rest of this uh, lecture number two. Uh, we've talked about dissociation. We've talked about uh, covalent and ionic bonds. We've talked about the electrons and neutrons and protons. There's a lot that we've discussed here. And then I just finished up talking about enzymes, right? And what, are, what do enzymes do? They lower the amount of energy of activation necessary. They lower the activation energy. And that allows chemical reactions to occur more quickly and to proceed. Without enzymes, our metabolism would come to a, gr to a screeching halt. So our body spends a lot of energy making enzymes so that our metabolism and all of our chemical reactions can occur in a timely manner. Now, also in next week's lab, we're kind of changing gears here a little bit, but also in next week's lab, we're going to be talking about acids and bases and pH. And this is another fundamental idea of chemistry and of biology, and we'll come back over and over and over throughout our time together. And so I know that between this conversation, your pre-lab for lab two, and doing the lab next week, as well as any mastering activities, that you'll feel really comfortable with this idea as you move into the first exam. So for the purposes of this class, we're going to call an acid something that when you put it into water, it dissociates and releases hydrogen. Okay, that'll be our definition. So when I put an acid into water, it dissociates into its ions, and one of those ions is going to be H+. That's the hydrogen ion. For example, if I have hydrochloric acid, HCl, okay, if I have hydrochloric acid and I put it into water, it will dissociate or break down into hydrogen ion and chloride ion. Because I get hydrogen, I'm going to call it an acid. Now, if you take other chemistry classes, you will learn that there are other ways of defining an acid. But this is the one we're going to use. And this definition will work for everything we're dealing with in this semester. Now, a base is something that, when I put it into water, dissociates into its ions and releases not H+, but instead OH-. Right? So not H+, plus, but OH-. Minus. That's called the hydroxyl ion, OH-. Minus. One more definition, salt. If I take a salt and I put it into water, it will dissociate into its ions. Neither one will be H plus or OH minus. Instead, I'll get my, my, my ion. So think table salt, sodium chloride. So if I take sodium chloride and I put it into water, what do I get? Na plus and Cl minus. I'm not getting any H plus. I'm not getting any OH minus. I'm not going to call it an acid. I'm not going to call it a base. It is called a salt. Okay. So sodium chloride, we know, is a salt. Another thing to keep in mind is that cations are, and I think I've already mentioned this, but I'll say it again, cations are positively charged ions. Example would be what? Right? So Na plus is a, is a, is a cation. So is H plus. Whereas an anion is a negatively charged ion, and that would be something like what? Cl minus or hydroxyl, right? Those are negatively charged, so those are considered anions. So this whole acid-base story brings us to the pH scale. The pH scale. Now, the pH scale is a scale that goes from 0 to 14. From 0 to 14. In the very smack dab middle of all that, there is 7, which is considered neutral. So something that has a pH of 7 is considered neutral. And water, pure water, is considered neutral. It has a pH of 7. Molecules that have a pH less than 7 are said to be acidic. Now, notice that the scale is going from 0 at the top down to 14 at the bottom. And look at the shape of this curve. What you'll see is that things that have more H plus are more acidic. And as things are more acidic, we start going toward a very low pH. 
kind of an upside down scale from the way most of us think. Mm -hmm. So that something that is more acidic actually has a lower pH value. Things that are pH 1 or 2 are very, very strong acids. Things that are pH around 6, weak acids. Okay. So what sorts of things in your everyday environment are acidic? Well, vinegar, lemon juice, right? We know that uh, uh, juices, uh, fruit juices are quite acidic. Strawberries are quite acidic. Uh, acid rain, you know, acid rain, we hear about it. It's acidic. It has a pH of around 4 or 5. What is that acid rain doing? What's it doing? That acid rain is chewing up our statues, right, and destroying our corals and doing all sorts of things to the forest and the, and the and ecology. Now, milk is a little bit, it's about 6.6, .6, so we would say what? Milk is slightly acidic. Water is right at 7 neutral. Human blood, your blood is at about 7.4. So that means that your blood is not neutral, but your blood is slightly alkaline. The other word for that is slightly basic. You'll hear both those words used, alkaline or basic. Okay, same thing. Things around your house that have a higher pH, that is they're more basic, would be milk of magnesia, why would somebody take milk of magnesia? Why would you go to Walgreens and buy some milk of magnesia? You've got heartburn or stomach acid, and what are you trying to do? Neutralize it or reduce the amount of acid. So you're going to take something into your body that is very alkaline or very basic to try to neutralize or counterbalance that acidity. Oven cleaner, amazingly alkaline. Anybody ever touched oven cleaner? You're always supposed to wear gloves, right, when you use that stuff? But if you've ever had to um, uh, strip wax off a floor or use oven cleaner, those are very, very, very basic and they feel very, very slippery. Very, very slippery. And it feels kind of neat for a second and then it starts to kind of tingle and kind of starts to feel not so good as it starts to eat away at your skin. Acids, on the other hand, aren't going to feel so slippery. They're going to feel very prickly and very burny very, very quickly. So acids are going to eat away at your skin. Bases are going to eat away at your skin, too. Next week, this is why we have to have gloves. So for lab next week, we will be interacting with some acids and bases. They're not so strong that they're going to really cause any damage to you, but we're going to be really good protectors of you. So you're going to have coats on that we'll provide, you're going to have your goggles, you're going to have the gloves that you're going to bring in, and you're going to make sure you have closed-toed shoes. Okay, so when we do that activity, make sure. When you're doing your pre-lab number two, it says to you, don't forget, next week you need goggles, gloves, and um, closed-toed shoes. So please don't forget that. Um, our lab manager gets very, very upset with me when I let people in who aren't properly attired. We do have a pair of waders uh, that we give to students who don't come in with the right shoes. Those waders are about a size 12 men's, and they come up to the hip. I'm not kidding. So I'll have these little girls with their little pedicures and little sandals getting into these really nasty waders. I don't know where they've been, and now they're protected. So please, bring your own cute little shoes that have closed toes, okay? Um, now, this scale is from 0 to 14. What's unique about this scale is that it's a logarithmic scale. Now, that may not mean much to you. But a logarithmic scale is similar to the um, scale used to classify earthquakes, okay, the Richter scale. That's also a logarithmic scale. So if you hear that there's an earthquake in Turkey at a magnitude 3, and then the next day there's one somewhere else with a magnitude 4, it doesn't sound like a big deal. But from 3 to 4, it is a 10 times more severe earthquake. And if you go from an earthquake of 3 to an earthquake of 5, you're going 10 times 10 more intense. So that earthquake is 100 times more intense. So the same idea here. On the pH scale, if I'm going from pH 8 to pH 6, it's a hundredfold difference in what? H plus or OH minus. Okay? So it's a hundredfold difference. So it's not a small difference. It's a big deal, the difference here. Now, 
There are also in your body buffers, and we'll be playing with buffers next week in the lab as well. And buffers are chemicals which can resist changes in pH. So bicarbonate, some other things we'll talk about um, are buffers, and they will keep the pH from changing. So that's the pH scale. We'll be playing with that next week a little bit more. Now let's make sure we understand this, um, and let's fill in these blanks. So each, if you have a pH of 3, and this is the same thing across the bottom, we've got 0 over here going up to 14. If you have the pH of 3, pH 3 is a 10 times stronger acid than pH what? pH 3, right, over here, is a 10 times stronger acid than pH. What's the stronger acid, 0 or 7? 0 is a very, very strong acid, right? 0 is as strong as it can get. 14 is a very, very weak acid or a very, very strong base. It's all a relative scale. So down here on the bottom, I could say that this is a strong acid, or I could say that this is an extremely weak base. On the other side, at 14, I would say that's a very, very strong base and a very, very, very weak acid. So let's ask it again. If I have something that's at pH 3, it is a 10 times stronger acid than at pH 4. I heard all fours that time. Good. So I should see about 20 pencils moving right now. Four. Now, what about the next one? pH 6 is a 10 times stronger acid than pH... Am I hearing all sevens? Right? Seven. Now, I'm going to turn around on you. pH 13 is a 10 times weaker acid than pH blank. Now, what could I say rather than weaker acid? I could say stronger base. Okay? So read it either way. Whichever way you can do mental cartwheels better. But pH 13 is a 10 times weaker acid than pH... Well, Flip it around. pH 13 is a 10 times stronger base than pH... 14. 14. Well. <coughs> okay, we're, we're here at 13, right? I want a 10 times weaker acid. Going down would be a stronger acid, right? Going up to 14 would be a weaker acid or a stronger base. So the answer is 14. For those who are still doing mental cartwheels backwards, we'll get there. Now, pH 4 is a hundred times stronger acid than pH... pH 4 is a stronger acid, hundred times stronger acid than pH... 6. 6. The other diagram's easier to use. Okay, okay. Uh, either... Turn it sideways, whatever you want to do, right? Now, what do we got here? pH 4 is a... Let me ask you the other way. pH 4 is a 10 times stronger acid than pH 5. It's a 100 times stronger acid than pH 6. That's a, did I say 100? It's a 1,000 times stronger acid than pH 7. Right? So for this answer, the answer is 6. Let's do another one. pH 12 is a 100 times stronger acid than pH 14. A stronger acid is going higher or lower in value? Lower on the pH scale. So pH 12 is a hundred times stronger acid than pH This is what makes politics so much fun, right? <laughs> Everyone's got their own opinion, but only one person's right. Oh, I didn't say that, did I? 
<laughs> okay, so what do we have here? Think about it. If we're at 12, up here, 12. And which way is stronger? To the left, right? Stronger acid. And each number along the way is tenfold. So if I want to get 100 times stronger acid, pH 12 is 100 times stronger acid than pH 14. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, 4 went up to 6 and 12 went up to 14. Yeah. Okay. Now, pH 1 to pH 14 is like our national debt. Right? I mean, there's a huge difference here, right? From pH 1 to pH 14, there's a lot of zeros in the difference. Okay? But as long as you can understand those. Now, if you're having trouble with those, just keep looking at them. Do a few cartwheels, flip the other way, flip it from stronger acid to weaker base, rearrange those questions a couple different ways, and let me know if you're still having trouble. Now, what did I say a buffer was? Yeah. Strong, weaker acid? A weaker acid. So the number went up. And then you have a stronger... But it's weaker. But the next one, you have a stronger acid, and the number went up. So they both... How can one be... Because the acid is stronger. The other one's... Talking At about one, one is stronger. The, stronger the acid is weaker. The, the other one says that the acid is weaker, so how did the number go up? Yeah. Oh, you know what? The third one down? Yeah. That's where I'm confused. Who told me 14, and who did I believe? It should have been 12. The third one down. Thank you. pH, maybe that's why everybody's confused, yeah. right? Okay, we'll see. Some brave soul raised her hand and said, oh, you're crazy, Mac. Okay, so pH 13, the third one down, is 10 times weaker acid than pH 12. Thank you. My bad. Now, are we more clear? Yes. We all feel better now? Bring little darts. Blunt end ones and just shoot them at me, okay? Okay. Sorry about that. So what did I say that a, a, a buffer was? Something that kept the pH from changing, okay? So there are buffers in our body. Uh, the buffers in our body are the same ones you would throw into your hot tub or your pool. Bicarbonate, basically baking soda. So we have that same stuff. We have Arm & Hammer floating in our blood. And your pool or hot tub, you throw big old bags of bar bicarb or sodium bar carbonate into your pool. And what does it do? It keeps the pH from moving and bouncing around, right? We want to keep the pH pretty stable in a hot tub or a pool. Now, you've got proteins. You've got other things in your body that also act as buffers. But buffers are basically things that keep the pH the same. Now, watch this. When I say that the pH value increases... That means that I'm going from, for example, pH 6 up to pH 8. What's actually happening? If I say that something's, the pH value is increasing, it's actually becoming more alkaline. Less acidic or more alkaline, right? And if I say that something where the pH value is decreasing, now it's actually becoming more acidic. Here's what happens all the time. People will say to me, oh, it's a stronger pH. Well, what, by, what do you mean by that? It's a stronger pH. Do you mean that it's more acidic? Or do you mean that it's a higher pH value? Because they're totally opposite, aren't they? So just be really careful. When you are describing to someone or to me on a test or a quiz and we're discussing pH and acid, don't say it becomes, the, the pH becomes greater. Now, what you norm, the pH value becomes greater. What you normally mean, when someone says the pH is becoming greater, they usually are trying to tell me that it's becoming more acidic. And they're kind of bass-ackwards. 
okay? Be really, really careful with the verbiage and with the reading of this because the scale is opposite of what we think. More acidic is a lower value. Be very careful. Say the pH value is going down or that something is becoming more acidic. Give me the full thought. Don't leave me dangling and hanging and wondering if you understand it or not. Just a couple more slides and we'll be done for the day. So water is a marvelous molecule. It is magical to our body. It's magical to our planet. It has a lot of very special characteristics about it. Without it, we could not survive on this planet, which is why we're always looking for water on other planets, assuming that water would be the key for life elsewhere as well. So water does a few very special things for us. One, it stabilizes our body temperature. Our body temperature can't fluctuate all over the place. We've got all this blood coursing through our veins and our arteries, and that our blood is about half water, and it's helping to maintain our body temperature by absorbing heat and keeping things more even. It's why it's always a little bit warmer by the lake in the wintertime and a little bit cooler in the summer because that big body of lake absorbs so much of the heat. Number two, the water in our body serves as a lubricant. It keeps things moving and, and, and uh, moist so that things don't get stuck. You don't, want a, you don't want a dry digestive system, right? You want it nice and lubricated. Solvent, uh, water is the molecule, in, or is the substance into which most of our molecules are dissolved. So water is the solvent for most of our body. So that means that things are dissolved in the water. And now we understand why water, why things dissolve so well in water. Because water is polar, right? Water is partially negative and partially positive, and so it can accept and dissociate and inter interact with many, many different molecules. And most of the chemical reactions occurring in our body are taking place in water. So most of the reactions in our body are, quote, aqueous. They're in a watery environment. And finally, uh, water is transporting all of these molecules through our body. Now, the collective word for all the things that are being transported through our body or that are dissolved in water is this term, solutes. Okay? So solutes. Solutes is all the, are all the stuff that's dissolved in your body, in your blood, in your plasma. I'm actually going to stop right there today, and we'll pick up with the rest of Chapter 2. Now, where are we going? Really, what we're going to be doing the last couple of uh, few minutes is talking about carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And once we have a basic understanding, so now we're at the, we've gone through the atom and the molecule level, and on Monday, we'll be picking up with the macromolecule level as we talk a little bit about carbs, proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids. And then that will finish up the material for exam number one. So we'll be done with that probably the first 45 minutes or so of our time together on Monday.